Righto, West Africa. Rep West African gold. Could be, boys. The new lithium. It's all happening today in West Africa and East Africa. African gold. It is in the We should do the intros more often afterwards. You're more fired oh, up. Oh, I just want to get right in and crack a tin. <laughs> Bloody love it. Right, we're getting into, like, Perseus are into Orcorp now. Tieto's independent expert report is released. Yep. Reject, reject. Don't touch, they're saying. Don't touch it. Mate, So on the junior end, which you love, JD, Taraco, they've acquired a bit of ground in Cote d'Ivoire and raising a bit of – raising some bucks. And uh, nothing to do with African gold mining. Eris, uh, topping up the – Topping up the kitty. Raising a couple bucks Much. as well. I'm Much. excited, mate. Live M&A, like, you know, third parties getting involved, wanting, wanting to have a say. Oh, oh, mate, this is, um, I love this stuff. You know who else is, ex- you know who else is excited? <laughs> I'm excited. Seamus Murphy. I'm ex- <laughs> Even he says he's excited. <laughs> Don't worry, boys. I know a bit now. <laughs> I'm excited. Uh, there's a bloody free one for you for the week, Seamus. Yeah, right. Now, a bit of info has come across me desk. Oh, the stuff that gets sent in to me these days just from the great supporters, it's sensational. Right. Apparently, apparently there is a regulation in the WA Mining Act, 1022, where you can get exemption from your expenditure conditions on the basis of bankruptcy, liquidation and or Insanity. Wow. This was your weekend reading. This is, <laughs> mate, unbelievable. So I've procured a bit of a cartoon that is uh, <laughs> pertinent to this clause. Look at this. <laughs> Look at this. Now, in the tough capital markets that we're, we've seen, like MDs are like could be prone to pretty much go under the loony bin. The pressure is on. That pressure is on. You end up in a bloody little straight jacket in a padded ball there. <laughs> MMTS. Now, like, they've had this service the whole time and it's one that we haven't talked about. <laughs> they can help MDs, any any company that has pretty much gone off the wagon <laughs> or on the wagon, which I always get confused about that, pretty much lost their shit and they can help them apply to get, like, the expenditure be exempt, exempt. exempt from expenditure requirements. because um, they've pretty much gone insane. Matty, I've got to say. Is I'm, that caring for the industry or not? It's definitely <laughs> caring for the industry. Duty of care. For the good people of the industry. The good the good people that are just a bit down on their luck <laughs> and the share the, the, you get 5,000 shareholders ringing you each day telling you how much of a bloody dickhead you are because they've lost their money. Like That would be enough <laughs> to send you to, what you know, a facility. Um MMTS are here to save you. Can I just can I just clarify, right? Like, I mean, we all know how niche our show is. We're talking about daily mining news. Not many people in the world care about that. But now you're pitching to the MDs of those companies who think that they might be going bankrupt, insane, or the company's approaching liquidation. Well, Could be a fair few of them. Look, I'm not recommending how to handle it, but if you go... That's going, about 50% of our audience. <laughs> if you're going bankrupt or, bankrupt or you're going into liquidation, there is an option. You could just tick the... Insane box and maybe save a bit of face. You need MMTS to help you on that. Yeah, one. I think so. Yeah. Well, uh, so anyway, if you are actually sane <laughs> and you're not going insane, MMTS can also help you as well, just for everyday mining title just compliance. Pick up the phone, just give <laughs> MMTS a call. All your title service related <laughs> queries, they can sort you out. You don't have to be insane. You right? don't have to be insane. You can be perfectly mm. sane, and they can just help normal. That's people. good to know. Normal sane people as well. So <laughs> what a what a diverse offering. Cheers, Boys, MMTS. Before get leading up to Christmas, I'm going to put the call out to the East Coasters that see Bondi at the Paragon or something after work. We've got to do the Bondi tell all. Is this your Christmas? Wish this will be a Christmas one. Christmas present for me. <laughs> oh, we want to do the Bondi Tell or Terra Capital while they're not bloody investing in natural resources. Based on every news article, it appears they invest in uranium because every yep. news article about Terra is about uranium. But I, we need to have the Bondi Tell all. We've had the Langers one. We've had the DK one. It's time for Bondi to open up. Open up. Don't go to all these legacy media joints, Bondi. <laughs> Come to the New Age podcast and tell your story. There's so many companies out there with great stories, I've heard. <laughs> I might have heard that one too. <laughs> Mate, Bondi, come to Perth, tell the Bondi tell all. Yeah, do it in person. Sit right here. Yeah.
Yeah. We'll and, make you comfortable. And then we'll go, we'll shout the BD afterwards. <laughs> Got some dingoes in the fridge right now. <laughs> Love right. it. Thanks, Tara, for all your support. Bondi, come over. If you see Bondi, heckle him. Tell him he's got to do his money a mine shark. <laughs> Let's rip in. <laughs> right, eh? Let's get into this African gold. The new, the new bubble. Is this the new bubble? Is it the new thematic African gold? Let's hope so for Coat our sake. Wine. I'm not quite so hopeful, but money we'll mine are first movers. Yeah, well, this one, this one's right actually. Eh? What's the update on the ore corp thing? We're going to start in Tanzania, Maddie. So as we spoke about in August, and then again last week a couple of times. Orcorp have been bid by Silver Lake, ah, Silver Corp, rather. They initially bid in August, then they put in another kicker after a bit of the uh, bit of shareholder revolt from the, the major shareholders, Nick Georgetta and Tim Goida. And now it's turned out that uh, Perseus has come in with a, what was this morning, a 15% stake, and what we've just seen updated to a 19% stake. So as a quick reminder, we're talking about the Nyangzaga gold project in Tanzania. It's 40 million tonnes in reserve at two grams per tonne for a 2.6 million ounce project. And they were looking to produce 234,000 ounces over the first 10 years, roughly. So mm, not not bad numbers. No. I mean, Perseus, have, they've acquired that um, stake, the initial 15 and now 19, just days after Silver Corp agreed to that four cent bump in cash consideration of their existing offer to um, all corp shareholders. AFR reported that the first 15 they picked up from Federation, which is that Oz super backed entity, um, not sure where, where they got that extra five from or four or five from uh, that's just come out now. But um, yeah, I mean, interestingly, when, when Allcorp opened in early trade, it was down 10%. And Perseus, they've stated this is it's not currently that it's not currently in active discussions with Allcorp. It does not intend to submit a change of control transaction in competition to the current Silver Corp scheme. Um, and it intends to vote against the Silver Corp scheme, which means that their their their, their stake is um it's going to be it's going to more than guarantee a block in the in the scheme. But so yeah. okay, so if we go off the fact that it was down ten percent at the start, not sure what it is as we're talking, and the fact that it's that bit of as we said at the start of the show, a bit of a it's like a bit of a Chris Gina tactic. Let's just take this uh, majority control minority control, but enough of a control to block any M and A. Take control, possibly look at a whether they're looking at a JV or a future takeover. But our shareholders now thinking, oh, geez, this mightn't be the kicker we were looking for for the takeout. What do you think, boys? I th- I think there's um there's two possibilities of what we could actually infer from Perseus's intentions, and one of them you're right about that, Christina um, tactic, right? So. Mm. Like for the purposes of the scheme vote going ahead, it's definitely like a blocking stake based on any expected voter turnout. Given Perseus say they aren't intending to submit their own change of control, I think it's one of two things. One is that uh, Perseus are wanting to form a a joint venture or similar with Silvercorp and provide a a development pathway together for Nine Zaga. Keep in mind Perseus does have better funding capability, better balance sheet. There's like fears that Silvercorp would need to dilute its shareholders further to fund the CapEx for that project, while Perseus obviously has plenty of cash. So you can see some merit in that. And the other theory, Matty, is um, to your point, Perseus is buying some time to submit its own bid, but it won't do so without getting access to due diligence, which it can't do while Allcorp's deal with Silvercorp is on foot unless it submitted its own bid. However, it won't submit its own bid if it doesn't have access to DD. So this is the way you can block the deal and ultimately get get access to DD. This is similar to that, you know, sort of Christina approach. You take a small stake, effectively block the M&A. Once the deal with Silvercorp is off, Perseus can submit an MBIO to the board, request access to DD. Keep in mind, assuming Silvercorp remains a shareholder um, throughout this, Perseus would need to actually lob a bit high enough for Silvercorp to accept themselves. So should they go down this route? Until the um, Silvercorp deal is off the table, the board is restricted from, um, you know, there's that no shop, no shop, no talk yep. um, characteristics of the scheme uh, implementation deed. So they're, they're prevented from kind of having these discussions unless there's that fiduciary out. For the fiduciary out to happen, there needs to be a bit on the table, which there's not. They do. So they need to put a bit in without DD. The only way that the only option Perseus have in contrast to buying the stake right now. Yeah, I think that yep. would that would warrant access. Well, that would that would yeah yeah. And, and right now it looks like they're not willing to to lob a bid without access to DD. You know, I kind of thought in my head that that maybe they'd done DD before. Maybe there was a data room before the Silver Corp deal. And I, 
I don't know. These are just the two theories that are um, in my head at the moment. Yeah, and this is all part of, as we've talked about before, Percy's looking to diversify the African exposure. Yeah, that's it. I don't think they've got any intention of leaving Africa, but in terms of in Africa, they previously had the, the Sudanese project, which had fallen over. We're going to talk about Tieto later on. You might ask why they're not having a go there. Yep. And I think, you know, the answer would be that they don't want to concentrate. They don't want to go to three assets within the one country, Cote d'Ivoire, yep. there. So this would be spreading their risk across Africa. And just on the timeline of this, it's going to happen pretty quickly. As we touched on when the kicker went in, the the timeline didn't change at all. So from memory, the, the voting's going to be done by 8th of December. So in the next couple of weeks, we're going to, going to find out whether that Silver Corp deal is going ahead and, you know, it seems quite likely that it, that it wouldn't given what Perseus has said. But, yeah, it should be interesting to see how um, how Perseus go about negotiating whether they want a JV or what a strategic partnership could look like. Right, let's get on to TNA then. Good. Oh, what, a, what an African gold segue. So they've come out today saying that the with the target statement saying directors are recommending to reject the off-market takeover bid by Zhao Jing Capital. So... As we've talked about before, they've got the the Abu Jar gold mine in Cote d'Ivoire. They haven't had the best ramp up with that project. They've had seasonal issues. They've had lower grade reconciliations than what was sort of first expected and outlined. And in in tandem, navigating their way through all the artisanal old workings, plenty of wooden shit going through the bloody yeah. mill. Sounds pretty, like a lot of bloody fun. It's pretty reflective of the uh, of the share price over the past year. It's just been trudging down and down and down as. Yep. Uh, you know, they'd failed to meet the first quarter guidance, second quarter guidance and all of that. So they they were – when we first spoke about them, they, that's when they were, they were on the decline and it appeared like with the – I guess there was a change in management. There was an updated life of mine plan coming out so it looked like a bit of a – getting a bit of balance back in like – they, the June quarter head grade was 0.68 grams per tonne. So they're updated mine plans for 1.04. So yeah. it's like a very – it's a low-grade one. So so they decided to really drill out the thing at a much closer spacing to get a much better understanding. And as well, the production profile became much more consistent in and around 170,000 ounces per annum as opposed to jumping around from 200 to 140 to 180 – over the, uh, the you know the the life of mine. Look at it, but how good is it when you if you don't drill it out enough? Like it's a win. So you don't drill it out enough, you can't figure out the grades lower, and it's cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> what a <laughs> that's what a way to do it, eh? <laughs> so anyway, look like and following on from that, that's when this uh, following on from that turnaround, that's when Zhao Jin uh, put in the non-binding off-market takeover for. Uh, at 58 cents cash offer. So they were an existing 7.25% shareholder. Yeah, and that, that 58 cents valued the, the whole business at $629 million. Yeah, and now the I guess the key part in the target statement today is the independent expert has deemed the offer is not fair and not reasonable uh, for the Tieto shareholders and they've assessed the fair value of Tieto shares to be in the range of 79 to 93 cents. So they're sitting at a bit about 61, I think, in early trade today. So that's a, a 36 to 59% premium to the unsolicited offer. So Yeah, they're, they're looking at a value between 900 and $1.05 billion for, for the whole business. Yeah, so I'll, I'll put up the, the key reasons put in this target statement of why Tieto shareholders should reject the offer. Better uh, board. The what? They're the board. Per, per not, the, a, not our reasons. No, this is the board. The board's reasons. So, number one, Zhao Jin's offer materially undervalues Tieto. Pretty much every MD says that. Um, Zhao Jin's offer is opportuni- opportunistically timed. Fuck, can you say that properly? Opportunistically. That's heaps better. Well done, Trav. <laughs> um, two of Tieto's major shareholders uh who hold 18.73% of shares do not intend to accept the offer at that price. The offer is subject to another conditions, regulatory approvals in China and Cote d'Ivoire, and therefore is uncertain whether the offer will ultimately proceed. If you accept the offer, do you risk missing out if a superior proposal comes from a third party? We can discuss that. And... If you accept the offer, you may pay tax on any gain you crystallise in the current financial year. Now, with, pretty standard, pretty with, standard um, reasons to reject. Yeah. With other offers, as you mentioned, JD, why or would Perseus look to this or not look to this mine? 
Yes, yeah, so like we touched on before, I can't imagine Perseus will lob a bit just for the, the pure reason of not wanting to concentrate their risk in Africa within the one country. They've already got the two mines in, in the Ivory Coast there. And from how we'd spoken about the asset in the past, a lot of people that we know who of a geological background, they didn't like the, uh, the ore body. They thought it wasn't drilled out with enough confidence. They have done a fair bit to, uh, you know, alleviate those issues for shareholders, but, you know, if you were a shareholder, it's coming a little bit too little too late. The the share price had dropped from 90-odd cents all the way mm. down to, to 35. And all, all funded by equity. Exactly. They exactly. a little bit of debt at, afterwards, but yeah. Later. It, yeah, it was, yeah, it was an interesting financing strategy for sure. Yeah, and in, t- in terms of potential other bidders out there, I'm not sure about you guys, but I struggled to see anyone on the ASX that would have a go. Not to say that there wouldn't be TSX or American-listed businesses that would – look at this one, but just for the um, the miners that we know that have substantial cash balances or, you know, access to debt, it'd be it'd be hard to imagine, you know, we're talking a pretty significant value, well over 600 million, mm. closer to a billion dollars now. Yeah. So like, yeah, it's a billion dollars for a, a one gram deposit. So it obviously, obviously comes with and add the jurisdictional risk. It does come with its risks. Not saying yeah. that no one will go for it, but there's obviously a bit more. Everything, it's one of those ones that sort of everything has to really, really go right. But drilling it out properly is the first step towards it, making that happen. It helps. Yeah. <laughs> it's, I read it as um, it's for sale now. But, you know, there's this live bid. Um, the board obviously recommend to reject. Um, that's like the playbook and you try to get a value uplift to something yep. more more palatable to shareholders along the way. But at the same time, it's an invitation for someone else if they're interested to lob a high bid too. So um, let's see how it plays, plays out for I'll the Tieto t- shareholders. I'll tell you a funny Tieto share story <laughs> that I'm involved in. I think I know this one. <laughs> so when we first did the episode and like, yeah. I, I like, I'm like, that was the one I actually went deep into research. Jeez, I learn a lot when I actually research. Who would have thought? <laughs> um, and I was like, shit, like this is – they drilled it out. There's an updated plan. It's been fully – it's been diluted to the shit house with how much equity raising and financing was done. I'm like, shit, this might be a buy here. And this is when the stock had got down to between 30, 30 and I think 40. it was 30, 30 cents. Yeah. So I put a buy order in for 29 and one share went – and then it and it went thirty one thirty two and I missed out on it and it kept going up. I'm like, oh, it should every other share I buy goes down eventually and I, and it didn't trigger. And then it went. <laughs> then the takeover co- offer come in at sixty, so I could have been in at thirty or thirty one. So hang and on, been Maddie. At sixty now, so I've You're just ding, ding, done ding myself. On this. A, oh, yeah, I've got one. <laughs> I have one share in Tieto. One. <laughs> That I got for thirty something cents, minus all the. I think it cost me fifteen bucks because of the broker. So, <laughs> so fucking hell! I'm not uh, sure I can uh, trust your incentives on so the. technically, uh, your reporting on this story. Sen- <laughs> technically, I've got negative. You've got the highest cost basis of anyone. Yeah, <laughs> I paid, <laughs> paid twenty bucks for that bloody. So it's, it's very much in your so interest was, for Tieto Sport to reject this one, so you can uh, get a better price. I can get me better price on me one share. So <laughs> I need to go. Need to go up to twenty bucks to cover the brokerage. <laughs> oh, dev- devastating times for Matt. All right, fuck. West Africa it continues. Taraco. Oh, well, this is on the on the junior end, so this it was just pertinent that we we're talking about it today. So they they already had some ground in in and around Cote d'Ivoire, and they announced announced last week they're requiring seventy percent of the FEMA gold project in Cote d'Ivoire from Endeavour Mining. So one and a half. Uh, what is it? U- US one and a half bucks, and they're issuing. Uh, 46 and a half million Taraco shares subject to escrow to Endeavour. So Endeavour's there because their market cap's US 5.3 billion and they're going to become a 9% shareholder in Taraco. So look, had a big run on the announcement last week, as you see, but wait, in a trading halt today to raise money. Who would have seen oh. that coming? Clockwork. You could read, <laughs> uh, I think they had three and a half million cash at the end of the quarter, but then paying one, one and a half bucks US for this purchase <laughs> and obviously, yeah, who would have thought? <laughs> I haven't seen the term sheet of that there. So oh, there's just a – it's a bit happening in that little West African region in around there Cote, Cote d'Ivoire. Yep. Oh, there's two things happening that we've talked about. The M&A, but, capital raising. Mm, yeah. So, yes, yeah, so it be interesting to see how this plays out and what Percy, as you said, to sum it all up, what is Perseus up to with this 20% stake? Will they be looking elsewhere as well? 
are they going to strike in this time? Yeah, it's interesting to see all the, the corporate action given the depressed valuations across across Africa, in West Africa in particular. Mm. Speaking of another couple of bucks that are getting raised, Trav. <laughs> Aries. Aries. Yeah, raising 30 bucks today, Matty. Uh, they, they had a pretty um, pretty hard time of late. We've discussed it many times on our podcast and mm. probably don't need to rehash the operational worries that, have, that they've faced um, today. But recalling their last quarterly, they're Quarter on quarter cash position was relatively neutral despite drawing down new facility with um, WH Soul Pats. Repaid a, 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 um, a, a different debt facility, but drew down a, a larger one. Uh, today, it looks like they're trying to repair the balance sheet with $30 million raise at a 27% discount. It's 11 cents, isn't it? So yeah. Right. Yeah. So I think when we talked about them last, when we talked about the, I think it was the quarterly when um, things weren't going so well, I think they were 20, 21 cents. Yeah, they're raising yeah. it. Raising at 11. Yeah, so they previously traded at 15 for yeah. the raise. Yeah. So WH Solpats, they're taking up their entitlement. They're underwriting the retail component of the raise, which should see their stake rise up to 33.2%, depending on how much they ultimately um, get in a shortfall. And the structuring of it's quite interesting. So they've structured the raising as an Anrio plus a placement together. What does that mean? Well, it basically means um, they get the money from the placement and the institutional component of the ANRIO in a week's time. So they're maximizing the money that comes in the door um, ASAP or upfront. There's a funny rule when you do a placement and an ANRIO together, you can get an uplift in your placement capacity. Um, it can be based off your pro forma shares and um, and you can see in a, a waiver that uh, that Aries has gotten from the ASX that they're actually – Get making use of this higher placement capacity as well. So they're really, really maximizing the early money in the door there. There's also a bit of a, a signal from from how they're going about this. And to me, that reads that they need cash and they need it quickly. Yeah, I think that's yep. a, a fair read through or just, just based on the equity um, raise structure. Um, the use of funds is really interesting on this one. It's in quotation marks, general working capital and increased financial flexibility is the, uh, the use of proceeds. Ooh. It's very nondescript. <laughs> Uh, yeah. For those quickly wondering why, you know, Solpats has such a big stake, they were the ones that had vended in, you know, Round Oak, the, the assets in, and they're sort of following their following their money, right? Correct. It, it's notable. Um, like if you look at their pro forma balance sheet, they'll have 50.5 million in cash and 40 million of drawn debt at the end of the raise. So hence 10.5 million in net cash position. But it's notable that in the in the use of proceeds, it's not like that use of proceeds is to pay down any of the debt facility. So that $40 million drawn debt actually still stays there and remains a bit of a risk for areas, I think. That debt facility is um is with Solpats, like like we mentioned, yeah. who are supporting the raise. The question for WH Solpats, do they help areas equity or or do they let them suffer and potentially take back the assets via an administration process? For, for now at least, you know, they're they're choosing to help areas. And so let's um let's hope things turn around for for areas sometime soon. Is that is that a form of protection in a way that the larger shareholder is actually the debt provider as well, so they don't protect them from getting called upon in yeah. a way? Yeah, I think you have more alignment to shareholders if if the debt provider also has a, a chunky bit of equity that they're trying to protect as well. Yeah, I do see that as a positive, um, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Right on, boys. Love your bloody work. Right. Uh Couple of sponsors to thank. Oh, mate, we've got we've a got bloody it. end of the week. I'm going to the AMEC Awards to pick up our award. Jeez, if, we're, <laughs> if I go to the event and I don't bloody, we don't win it, I'm going to be spewing. I'm never going again. I, it's uh, bad luck to put, claim the award before. <laughs> I'm not claiming it, but like, Jesus, if I go and we don't win it, <laughs> like, that's we're bloody. spewing. I'll be spewing. We've got a couple of uh, interesting interviews that we can um, give a bit of a prelude to oh, as well. Oh, yeah. Our, uh, we've got a friend from North America coming over. It might be, it might even be a two-parter that we released this week. He's I'm coming excited. over via Zoom, yeah. My, yeah. A marsupial friend. Oh, that. Oh, another. Oh, not that one. We've got another. He's American coming one. here in person. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. And, but then we've got the um and another American one this week. Big Mister Lith coming back yeah. on for we another do. run. Yeah, via Zoom that one. V, that is via <laughs> Zoom. He might fly over. He does yeah. love us. Yeah. yeah. And uh, what Fair else enough. coming up? Oh, that's that's quite a bit. On your oh. note on the awards, Maddie, I got a message from a um, a journalist saying I'll see you at the uh, awards, and I said, "Oh, Maddie will be raising the flag for us." But um, JD and I are very cynical on awards. We assume they're all bribed these days. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm hoping to get this one for free. So. <laughs>
<laughs> nothing, nothing dodgy happening. Righto, partners, partners, boys, partners. How good's a bloody partner? <laughs> Paying cash. Love it. Mate, DSI, Underground, Terra Capital, McMahon Mining Title Services, Future Proof Consulting, Anytime Exploration Services, KCA, KCA Site Services, oh, JP it. Search, Take it over, Brooks JP. Airways, and K Drill. Thanks you. a bunch of sponsors. Bloody work, money miners. Hooderoo. The information contained in this episode of Money of Mine is of general nature only and does not take into account the objectives, financial situation or needs of any particular person. Before making any investment decision, you should consult with your financial advisor and consider how appropriate the advice is to your objectives, financial situation and needs.